this time of year, we start bringing in plants into our homes. Perhaps we buy poinsettias or we might be getting fall bulbs delivered that we intend to plant, but just haven't gotten out in the garden to do it just yet. As we bring these plants into our home, around our pets, we might be concerned about their safety if, if they start nibbling on some of those leaves. Last season, we shot a segment about poisonous plants around your pets. And unfortunately though, we ran out of time and were unable to air it. So without further ado, here's a few tips on protecting your pets around those plants. Pets are like family these days and we want to make sure that we're providing them with a safe environment. Often where they play is in our garden and just like there's poisonous plants for people, there's also poisonous plants for our furry friends. The cycad or sago palm is one of those plants. While it has spiky tropical like foliage and we often use it for that, especially on patios and around pools. It's one that dogs like to chew on sometimes, perhaps because of that leathery feel to it. But this is one you want to make sure to keep out of the reach because it can cause liver failure. All parts of this plant are potent and poisonous, so make sure to put it in a container out of the reach of your dogs. Castor bean is another plant that we love to add into our garden to give us that tropical look with its bold green and maroon foliage. It's one that we definitely want to keep out of the reach of our pets as it's very poisonous and it's poisonous to people as well, especially those beans that it produces. The Liliaceae family is one of the largest plant families, including our day lilies, our Asiatic lilies, and also our oriental lilies. Now it also includes the hyacinth and the tulips. Almost all of them, with the exception of Lily of the Nile, are poisonous to our pets. They can cause kidney failure in our feline friends, and in our dogs they don't cause kidney damage, but they will uh, cause a mess as the pet tries to expel that poison. <laughs> The last thing that I want to mention that you might find in your landscape isn't a plant, but in fact it is the cocoa mulch. We all know that dogs are allergic to chocolate, but even in this form, the dog might be tempted to get into that mulch, and if eaten, it can be toxic to your animal still. Now, of course, this is not an exhaustive or an extensive list, and a lot of times when your pet eats something, it depends on many factors, both your pet and the plant. The first thing you always want to do is consult your veterinarian. Now, because I love plants and I love pets, we went to the OSU School of Veterinary Medicine to find out more. We are here at the Oklahoma State University Center for Veterinary Health Sciences, and joining me is Dr. Sipneski, who is a veterinarian here, and we wanted to talk a little bit about poisonous plants for our pets. So what are some scenarios that you often see that come into your clinic? Well, certainly young, curious puppies love to eat things that they're not supposed to. They're kind of like toddlers, so they will definitely get into things that um, the average dog wouldn't eat. So certainly they love to get into plants that are around the yard just because it's fun to get in right. to them. The other thing is, is certainly those inquisitive older dogs that owners plant something new and they decide that that's just the right day to, to eat something they're not supposed to. So a lot of it's based off of personality of the dog, I mean? I think so. I mean, it, on, every, on any given day, any dog can eat anything. But I think that the younger and more orally fixated dogs will eat plants and then also the really, really curious adults. And, and cats too. I mean, we don't want to exclude oh, cats. Oh yeah, we don't want to exclude <laughs> yeah. cats. That would definitely put them all against us. Yeah, <laughs> so, so bulbs are obviously one of the big toxic things that we often see. Um, you know, do you see that quite often come through here? Or? Unfortunately, yes, because all bulbs are toxic. There's not a single bulb that isn't toxic to a, a dog or a cat, which a cat probably wouldn't eat one, but owners leave them laying around because they don't think that they're toxic and dogs will just come and swallow them right up and then oftentimes the owners don't know that they're missing which is a problem because if they have a lot of bulbs in the area they don't they don't think about it or the dogs can dig them up and in that case the owner usually knows what what's been dug up. Yeah and you mentioned sometimes we buy them as gardeners and leave them thinking we'll get around to planting yeah. them and I'm guilty of that too. Unfortunately there's a lot of bulbs in my yard <laughs> as well that are just laying on the ground. Yeah <laughs> yeah so so what can we do to kind of reduce the our pets being bored? 
Well, I certainly think that enrichment activities for pets is important. Mm -hmm. um, you know, certainly walking them and playing with, um, you know, toys and, and basically getting out their energy is important. Um, I think that boredom still can exist, though, and certainly they like to sniff and wander around the yard. And so oftentimes just making sure that the, the owners are spending time monitoring their dogs when they're outside and observing them when they're in their garden. You kind of mentioned they're like toddlers, right? You got to keep a close eye on them sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> they're probably worse than toddlers because they stay that way for most of their life. Okay. Well, and so what about with some of our vegetables? You know, I know we have a lot of nightshades that are vegetables, peppers, tomatoes, things like that. Right. They're pretty toxic as well. They absolutely are. And, and one thing that's important important for most gardeners is, is just trying to find a way to um, identify the plants in their garden that are fatal, as in the yew or nightshade, um, and making sure that those plants are something that they try to avoid having in an area where an animal can get to them, and really be knowledgeable of the other side of plants that maybe those that just cause maybe minor GI up or gastrointestinal upset or minor um, irritation to the oral cavity. So I definitely think that the more gardeners spend time in learning what's in their garden, mm -hmm. um, the better off they're going to be in general. Okay, and what should we do if a homeowner, you know, suspects that maybe their pet has gotten into something that shouldn't have or eaten something that it shouldn't have? bring it straight to the vet and what sort of information should they bring with them? Well, I certainly think that the quicker the identification of the plant, the better off both the veterinarian, the owner, and the pet are. So if you can bring in the plant that they've eaten, part of it, if, or if you can get a, a picture of that plant, um, it certainly will help improve identification. So it'll help improve us deciding what the best treatment is. The sooner we know, the easier um, treatment is. All right, excellent. Well, thank you for helping us keep our pets safe. Absolutely, you're very welcome. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.